Mm -hmm. You mind, though? Oh, no. Yeah, at least then when you finish, just pass the plate over here and I'll chew it for him, too. watch this movie all the way through till 2019. <laughs> Don't judge me, but it quickly became a holiday favorite for me. First of all, this movie stars some of our black Hollywood faves and it has a hilarious and unforgettable scene which solidifies this being one of my must watch for the holidays films. Also, I feel that this movie is relatable, especially Kelly, Lisa's, and Quentin's storylines, but I'll get to that. While watching this movie, I noticed so many things, and now it's time to talk about it. So let's get into it. The movie starts with us slowly getting introduced to our main characters. We meet Joe and Madeer, the mother of the film. We also meet Lisa and her sleazeball of a husband, Malcolm, and the baby of the family, Michael, AKA Baby. We also meet Quentin, who currently lives in Chicago. And apparently, he's got himself caught up and is now ducking and dodging these two. Back in LA, Baby shows Madeer his new camera that Joe bought him. This sparks an argument between Joe and Madeer since she thinks it was too expensive. But Joe wasn't trying to hit it, and Baby later personally thanks him for his gift. Later on, Lisa and Malcolm arrive at the family home and everyone is awaiting the arrival of the other Whitfield siblings. And the fact that everyone else is taking their precious time is really getting on Lisa's nerves. We also meet the family's assistant, I don't want to call her a maid, Rosie. She might look familiar to you. She played Yolanda Saldivar in Selena. And you know everybody loves Selena's. But anyway, we go to Lisa's husband, Malcolm, who's talking to his assistant and side chick, Karen, on his secret phone. He promises to catch back up with her when he can. Joe greets him outside, and shortly after, Miss Kelly pulls up. See, I like Kelly. We'll learn why as we go along, but Kelly is the fly rich auntie who sees Malcolm for what and who he is. Malcolm. Kelly. Hey. Kelly comes in and everyone is excited to see her. The excitement quickly wears off though because Lisa and Kelly couldn't wait to compare their lives and assets. Did you see our new Escalade outside? You know I rented a BMW convertible. Sex. But there's one area where Kelly completely fails in. Oh yeah, y'all want me to make something? No. no! It's here where we meet another Whitfield sibling, Claude. The family is really surprised since they weren't sure he was going to be able to come home since he's in the service. When Lisa makes a joke about Claude's future boo, this starts another back and forth between Lisa and Kelly. Some of us were busy going to college while others chose to stay home and learn how to cook. And those of us who chose to stay home helped with the cleaners while the rest of us who jetted off to college the first chance they got. Clearly, there's some resentment there. We also meet Mel and her current boo, Devin. Poor Devin. As soon as Mel walked off, the guys immediately started sizing him up. But what I really want to know is why Malcolm played a part in it, because you know what? We'll get there. Later on, everyone sits at the table to eat. Madeer passes out profits from the family cleaner business out to all the siblings. Malcolm asks Lisa to heat up his plate, even though everything just came out the oven, and even asks Lisa to cut up his food for him, like he's a toddler or something. Yeah, Lisa, and when you finish, just pass the plate over here and I'll chew it for him, too. <laughs> Shut up, Kelly. There's an awkward conversation when Devin assumes that Joe is their father and a minister, and Mel lets him know that he wasn't their father. Claude tells him that their real father moved on, and Devin assumes again that their real father died, but their real father left all their asses and never came back. The conversation quickly shifts to Devin's choice in school. He attends Morehouse. Now, Malcolm wanted to know why he chose an all-black school. Apparently, he looks down on them since he went to Princeton. Kelly doesn't feel the same way, though, even though she went to Harvard. But Devin gives him a solid answer as to why Morehouse was the best choice for him. Morehouse has certain foundational principles by which his entire existence stands. But that's also why I go there. Not because it's an all-black school, but because it embodies the beliefs and traditions that I value. The fact that all the students look just like me is a bonus. 
We go back to Chicago where these guys, Dude and Mo, yeah, those are the names, are looking for Quentin. They bring up how if they don't find him, then Luther would take over. And if Luther takes over, it's a done deal for Quentin. Meanwhile, <laughs> Quentin has made it to LA. Back at the family home, Malcolm gives Lisa a nudge to go ahead and discuss the sale of the family cleaners. So Lisa starts with how Madeer has been running the cleaners for over 20 years and how the money that she makes only maintains the house expenses and the profits that she gives the siblings. And you already know Kelly wasn't with it. And Malcolm didn't like that. Oh, and Lisa wants to sell the house too. Baby ain't even graduated and left yet. And when Baby confronts Lisa, she says how she's sure he'll want to leave soon since he has all the girls flocking to him. But what they gotta do with you trying to push him out the house like that? And while they're talking about that, some tea gets spilled when Mel finds out that Joe has been staying in the family home since she left for school. Child, let your mama live her life. <laughs> mama gotta have a life too. And Kelly confronts Malcolm, letting him know to his face that she knows that he's the one who put Lisa up to this. I don't want to intrude in family then business. Then don't, because I know you put her up to this. Oh, come oh. on. So you think I'm not smart enough to come up with this idea on my own? No, it's just your weak-willed and easily influenced. So you're saying- Another thing I loved about Kelly, she called a thing a thing. But of course, in black movie fashion, there's a soul train line because why not? And then there's another surprise appearance. Quentin has finally made it home. While Quentin is eating a late dinner, the other siblings catch up with him and give him a rundown on their Christmas itinerary. Things get awkward when Joe comes in at the tail end of Quentin's sentence and asks him a question about God. So what does that mean, man? You don't do church? I don't believe in God. I don't believe in your God, y'all. Quentin complains about the fact that Joe is not his daddy, and that's understandable, I guess, but where is your daddy, though? <laughs> we'll get to that later. Later on that night, Malcolm and Lisa are talking about how Quentin will pose a problem, other than Kelly, when it comes to getting everyone to agree with selling the family cleaners and home. Now that I think about it, how y'all consulting with each other and not y'all mama first? Child. But if Quentin says no, their mom will say no. We also learned that Quentin doesn't know that Joe and his mama have been staying together this whole entire time. This whole entire time. Quentin's grown, probably 30 plus year old ass is still waiting for his daddy to come home with the milk. Child, that man gone gone. Anyway, Malcolm tries to get a little something something started, but when Lisa comes out the bathroom looking like this, the vibe is gone. I guess fresh breath ain't his thing. We go downstairs to Mel and Devin. It's here where we learn more about this missing daddy. Apparently, Senior, that was his name, left a little after baby was born. He decided to go and chase his dreams of being a musician and never came back home. Baby is in college, so maybe 18, 19, almost 20 years. This man has been gone and living his best life. But all of this is the reason why Madeer doesn't like for her kids to do anything concerning music because she feels it would drive them away like it drove away their daddy. Anyway, Lisa finally made it out of the bathroom and now wants to initiate something. But now homeboy wants to play sleep. This dude was doing way too much. <laughs> Later on, Joe goes to the garage to get some Christmas lights and he gets caught by Quentin. Quentin tries to assert some power, but Joe shuts him down by saying that if there's an issue, he needs to go to his mom. We go to Madeer upstairs in her room. She pulls out a picture of Senior. Clearly, she still holds space for him in her heart, almost 20 years later. Anyway, Madeer goes to check on Kelly. Slick interrupts her groove, but she asks her when she plans to settle down like her sister, and Kelly dodges that question real quick. But that still didn't stop her mom from saying this. When you gonna settle down, child, like your sister? Well, I don't have a problem settling down, mama. I have a problem settling for less. Long as you remember, your career is not gonna keep you warm at night. And then she finishes with this. Need some batteries? <gasps> I would have been mortified. <laughs> we go to Claude, who's having secret convos on the steps. 
Yeah, we'll get to that. And Mel and Devin decide to do something risky in the pantry. But that couldn't even get started because Quentin walks in soon after. Then Kelly comes in and starts a convo with him. Kelly tells him about Lisa wanting to sell the cleaners and the family home. And Quentin doesn't have much to say about it because he's just hearing about it and they never consult with him about anything anyway. Claude makes an appearance in the kitchen as well. He's headed out the door to some secret destination. Somehow, Devin gets brought up, but nobody says his name right, which prompts Devin to correct them from the closet. Child. So all of them go out with Claude to this club. Claude quickly spots this chick and makes his way to her. Meanwhile, Kelly is getting stared down by this guy and asks Quentin to put in a good word. Claude goes over to Sandy, his wife, whom none of his family know about, and he's too terrified to tell them. He quickly shoots her off so that nobody finds out. Baby, instant divorce. But shortly after, Baby's name is announced as the next performer and the siblings are shocked and afraid. But Baby Boy is talented. After he's done, these dudes go up to Claude to congratulate him on getting a white girl. They go on to say this rude shit. Those white girls ain't got much junk in the trunk, but I hear they got some strong need. <laughs> this went left real quick, but why would they feel so comfortable saying that to somebody? Like why? Anyway, the siblings come over and stop this before it goes any further and hightail it out the club. Later, when Baby makes it back home, they question him on why he never told anybody that he could sing. Baby tells them that he's afraid of how their mama will respond. He makes them promise not to say anything about it. The next day, Kelly pulls up acting like she's the Pink Panther, trying her best to avoid the walk of shame. But when she goes up to tell Lisa and Malcolm that breakfast is ready, she walks in on Malcolm's conversation as he's talking about funding a deal that's in progress and it serves as even more proof that Malcolm ain't shit. Later that day, the guys and Joe go out to get a Christmas tree. They bring up Claude's violent activities from the night before, which he quickly shuts down. And the boys, minus Quentin's bitter ass, <laughs> choose a tree. We go back to the sisters at home. They question Kelly about her hot night out with the guy from the club. She lets them know he was doing most of the giving and it was a shared experience. <laughs> and of course, Lisa's judgy ass says this. Well, you know they have a word for women like that. Smart. Huh. What? But while she was being judgy, she slipped up and let out a little of her own tea. I'm just trying to school you. You don't want to end up accidentally pregnant and then the next thing you know, you got two kids calling you mommy. Did that just come out of my mouth? Child. And then Malcolm comes in the room with all that tension. But Lisa quickly gets up to drop him off at the airport. Meanwhile, Santa has made an appearance. It's the good Santa this time. <laughs> the same Santa that gave Kelly plenty of presents the night before. But Gerald, that's his name, has come to check in on Kelly and ask her on a date. Things are moving pretty fast for these two. And Mel peeped their whole interaction and wanted answers. You slept with Santa. I guess I did. Ho, ho, ho. We go back to Lisa dropping off Malcolm at the airport. Lisa reminds him that it's Christmas Eve, but he tells her he'll be back tomorrow and insists that Lisa consider the fact that they have a lifestyle to maintain, so she should just let him do what he needs to do. She agrees, but this fool leaves without saying, I love you, see you later, none of that. But he did remember to say this. Oh. Make sure you put it in the carport, all right? Just in case it rains. We go to Sandy, who is all alone while her husband is hanging with his family. Technically, their family that he's still hiding her from. Let me remind you, it's Christmas Eve. What is he waiting on at this point? While that's happening, Madea tells Rosie that she received a Christmas card from Senior. Turns out, Madeer and Singer are divorced, and apparently nobody knows about it. Madeer is afraid of how Quentin would take it, but let me remind you, this dude been gone since baby was a baby. And speaking of Quentin, he gets a surprise visit from these guys who have made their way to LA, all the way from Chicago. 
He must owe big bucks. <laughs> and he is saved from this beatdown only because the Popos pull up to retrieve Claude for his bar activities the prior night. But while Lisa and Quentin are riding down to the precinct with Mo and Dude of all people, Quentin confronts Lisa about her and Malcolm's plans of selling the cleaners. While they're going back and forth, she lets it slip that Joe has been staying with Madeer since Mel went off to college, and Quentin is shocked. Later on at the precinct, Lisa and Quentin learn that while the club promoter dropped the charges, Claude has even more issues since he's AWOL. Meanwhile, Madeer is going off on everybody and now she's too stressed out to cook her delirious ass gives kelly the task of cooking which is crazy because everybody knows she can't cook this struggle meal is i would not eat that shit anyway malcolm calls home to tell lisa that he will be arriving back in town later than expected he's currently holed up in a hotel with karen he didn't tell them that though but Kelly peeps the hotel number on the caller ID and makes a mental note. This will definitely come up later. Lisa, Quentin, and Sandy have made it back to the family home. While Madeer is questioning them about Claude, Sandy chimes in and the truth finally comes to light. Madeer, that's Sandy Whitfield, your daughter-in-law. Uh-oh. Adir quickly accepts her and gets her settled in, and Dude and Mo are still hanging around. Madeer convinces them to stay around and eat, and you already know Quentin didn't like that at all. Sometime later, we go to Mel and Sandy. Turns out that Claude didn't inform his superiors that he got married, and his leave was denied, and he's still left with Sandy. Oh, and she's pregnant too. And of course her parents don't like Claude because he's black. This girl is going through it, and Claw had the nerve to try to hide her. Poor baby needs support. But we go to Lisa and Kelly, and as always, they can't ever talk to each other without it leading to an argument. The topic of Kelly leaving her to take care of the family business and their younger siblings comes up. But then Kelly brings up something that Lisa needed to hear. He's cheating on you, Lisa. I know. No. Lisa goes on to say that since she has two kids and no degree, she should somehow expect this from him. And Kelly, though very harsh, tells her what she needs to hear. Yeah, well, I think sharing your husband with another woman makes you pretty damn pathetic. Pathetic. Oh, and she wasn't done. There was more. You let that fraction of a man run you because you're scared to start over? Women do it every day. I stand by everything she said. Though very harsh, Lisa needed to hear that. Lisa got so upset after their little tussle that she leaves the house. Meanwhile, Quentin talks with Madeer. I guess he was trying to confront her about Joe, but Madeer quickly got him together. See, some men aren't fit to be married. They're just too selfish. Child, then we go to Lisa who is in her feelings. Seems like those true words from Kelly and everything going on with Malcolm has reached its peak and something's gotta give. And that something was Malcolm's prized possession. Dude and Mo are still hanging around the house and we learn that Quentin owes them 25,000. What did he even do with the 25,000? but their conversation is interrupted by Baby and Joe. Now, whole time, Joe is peeping the scene. He doesn't say much, but you can tell that he knows something is not right with Dude, Mo, and Quentin. Sometime later, Gerald stops by the house to get Kelly, but Kelly tells him that it's not a good time and tries to send him on his way. But Gerald tells her that he's known her since the ninth grade and recognized her that night at the club. When he tells her this, her stance changes and she decides to let him in. As the night goes on, we see Baby making the family Christmas album, Lisa's asleep with the kids, Mel and her boo Devin are in the bed, Kelly and Gerald are in the bed, Sandy in bed alone while Claude is in jail thinking of her. We also see Quentin going to the garage to get something for Joe, a peace offering of sorts. Quentin goes to check in on Baby. They have a heart to heart. And as they're talking, Madeer overhears them and asks Baby what he's hiding from her. 
Baby tells her that he wants to be a singer and that he doesn't want to eventually resent her like she resents Senior for leaving. He brings up Joe and tells Madeer some much needed truth. Some of y'all think that you haven't married Joe because of us. But the sad truth is you haven't married him because of you, Ma. And then we go back to these two who are getting settled in these twin beds until they realize they've gotten got by Quentin. Quentin has hit their pockets and made his way to the train station and is about to skip town again until he opens up this present from Baby and has second thoughts. But before he could act on those thoughts, Dude and Mo come for that ass. But Joe came in for the save and talks king shit. You ain't tough guys, man. You bookies. Now take this. My gift to y'all. Joe's officially saved Quentin's ass, and he tells him this. What you really have left at the end of the day is family. A real family, boy. Now, after all of this, Quentin somehow gets this urge to leave town again. This man is stubborn to the bone. But the next morning, Malcolm has made his way back home and is introduced to Claude's wife, Sandy. And ironically, Gerald is taking his walk of shame, which ends with a kiss. Yeah, Gerald knew he made his mark and she came running, baby. Love that for you, girl. Santa's coming to town. <laughs> and finally, our favorite part. So, Malcolm came to greet Lisa and she was sitting on the bed in her lingerie looking cute. Baby, he thought everything was good and she was hyping him up too. You know when I get out the shower, you know you gonna get it. So are you. Child, a whole time he getting undressed to get cleaned up, she putting her clothes back on. She went to borrow some baby oil from her mom and goes to set the scene in the bathroom. Lisa sprays the baby oil all over the floor, and the show starts. Now you tell me. Run up! What's wrong with you, woman? Ah, oh, shit! Have you lost your mind? I feel she deserves a special counter. We love a good comeback. But later on, Lisa goes out to talk to Kelly and apologize to her. She admits that Kelly was right, and she tells her that she's filing for divorce from Malcolm. Baby oil, the whole damn box. <laughs> and of course, this is a black film, so we gotta have a end of the storm, the family goes to church scene. During this, we see Claude get released from jail and we see Quentin on the train. A little later, Joe introduced Baby to the congregation as he was going to sing a special number which came as a surprise to Madeer, but it didn't take too long for her to soften and appreciate his talent. Shortly after, Claude enters the building out of the blue and all is well there. After service, while everyone is eating, they get a surprise reappearance from Quentin and the whole family is back together again. And Quentin even offers Joe the head of the table. Child, about time he came around and low key, Joe been sitting at the head of the table anyway. But I digress. But this is pretty much the end of the movie. We get a family toast and everything is good. And of course, another Soul Train line. Can't forget that one. But here are my final thoughts. There are so many characters in this movie, so I will just go one by one starting with Mel. Now, I didn't touch on this during the review. Her character had the least interesting storyline, but what was interesting about her was that she had been in college for seven years and changed her major about three or four times. And every time she changed boyfriends, her major changed with them. I'm gonna need for Mel to get to know herself and what she wants for herself outside of being in a relationship. She's gonna sell herself short. On to Claude. Child, I think Clyde had a little PTSD, the way he him dude up in the club. But in all seriousness, when was he planning to let his family know he was married? It's Christmas Eve, and you got your wife, pregnant wife at that, holed up at some hotel while you trying to find the courage to tell your family that you're married to a white girl. You already married a baby. At this point, it don't matter what they think. It's time to stand by your decisions and the family you created. And I wonder what happened after he got out of jail. What were the repercussions of going AWOL? I'm ignorant on that whole process. On to Madeer. 
we have to give props to Madeer for holding it down for her family, maintaining the family business and the family home despite Senior's alienation. Cause that's what it was. He straight up abandoned his family. This man left when baby was born and never came back. And Madeer resented him for leaving her to clean up his mess. Though I understood why she didn't want her kids to have anything to do with music since she felt that it played a big part in senior leaving and she didn't want her kids to leave her. By doing that, she was unknowingly holding down Quentin and Baby's talent and passion for music. They should be free to explore their dream, especially since they are young and don't have wives and kids to abandon while chasing their dreams. The situation would be different. And it was her resentment that was keeping her from moving on with Joe. I really liked Joe. He looked out for them and played a fatherly role for all the characters, even the ones they didn't see it for him. I'm happy that she came around with Baby pursuing music in the end, and I hope that she went all in with Joe in the end as well, because he was really a good guy. On to Quentin. Child, Quentin got on my nerves. <laughs> First of all, how you owe somebody 25000 and what were you planning to do with the money? Were you gambling? I don't think they said, or maybe I missed it, but you went in Chicago over the age of 30 and still trying to hold space for a dude that left when your baby brother was a baby and he grown as hell now. If you don't get, and I get it, maybe he was super attached to his dad and always wished for him to come back, but baby, it's been damn near 20 years. Let it go. He's not coming home with the milk is spoiled now. Let your mama be happy with Joe. <laughs> she deserves consistency, something your dad can give none of y'all. I'm gonna lump Kelly and Lisa together for obvious reasons, but I'll start with Lisa. Lisa and Kelly obviously had a strained relationship due to Kelly going off to college and leaving Lisa to help out with the family business and their younger siblings. Lisa felt as if she wasn't given the choice or opportunity to go to college and do bigger things because she was burdened with the task of taking care of everything and everybody. And this was the root of their issue with each other. And this caretaker role carried over into Lisa's marriage with Malcolm. Malcolm was not a good dude. He was cheating on Lisa, which Lisa confirmed later that she knew about this, and he was pushing Lisa to sell her mother's home and business without consulting her in order to fund some investment property or business that he was trying to get. You don't even like this woman. <laughs> you love your car more than you love her, yet you wanna take the money from her mama's business and house to fund your endeavors. Dude would have had me so messed up about me and mine. And this is exactly why I stand by Kelly, because that's how hard I'm coming for mine. You can play in my sister's face all day, but what you're not about to do is play in my face about my sister or my family, period. And like I said before, though Kelly was harsh, <laughs> it was that harshness that finally got through to Lisa and encouraged her to really look at things for what they were and to make the best decision for herself first and her kids. Love that for her. Love that for the both of them. I hope they were able to mend their relationship. As for Kelly and her new boo, <laughs> love to see it. They moved kind of fast, but hey, if they both want it, child, who are we to stop them? But anyway, that's it for this review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. As for the next review, all I'm gonna say is 1996, iconic soundtrack, legendary songstress turned actress, Oscar winning actor, remake of a classic film. See you next time you guys. Bye. Oh,